day everyone and welcome to my channel English one on one Today we will be exploring the engaging short story Georgia and them there United States stay tuned as we discuss the storyline themes narrative techniques and many more this presentation seeks to provide you with vital information so that you may effectively address essay questions on it for your upcoming CSEC examination let's explore Short story, Georgia and Them, Their United States, written by the esteemed Jamaican writer Velma Pollard, is one that addresses contemporary issues such as patriotism, migration, and the loss of cultural identity. Through the eyes of her characters June and Letitia, on each who are polar opposites, Pollard skillfully and wittingly outlines the contrast between these two worlds, Jamaica and America. June, who represents Jamaica and rural Jamaican lifestyle, is not as fascinated with America as Aunt Teach, who has recently received her American citizenship. In fact, June is fabricated by the presence of so much ugliness in America. Let's explore now the characters. First up is Georgia. Georgia, Letitia's daughter, has assimilated the American culture. Georgia is presented throughout the story as someone who is easily influenced. Hence, it was not surprising that she has adopted the same mannerism as her mother. Based on June's description of Georgia, we get the impression that old Georgia no longer exists, but in her place was a fake representation of the former self. She was just a big wigged, giggling puppet with more makeup than anyone should wear this side of the footlights. Look at our second character, June. June, on teach niece, is very loyal or patriotic to her native country, Jamaica. She does not share the same sentiments as Letitia, who considers her native country a downgraded place. June, unlike her cousin Georgia, is self-assured and confident. She knows who she is and is proud of her identity. She does not put on airs to impress anyone and in fact pities Aunt Teach for pitying her. Her devotion to her native land is conveyed in the following statements. And I marvel at how the peace of the heat and cold and the clustered greenery of orange trees, as far as my eyes could see, could mesmerize me. And I knew that the city, my city then, or any future city, could never claim the grass-bound, hill-bound soul of me. I felt a great pity for my aunt, almost as great as the pity she felt for me. What are your sentiments about your country? Do you share the same devotion as June? Let me know in the comment section below. Aunt Teach Letitia Aunt Teach Letitia is not proud of her Jamaican cultural identity and so it was easy for her to assimilate the American culture. She pities her sister who has remained devoted to Jamaica and cannot fathom how she has stayed there. Her sheer disgust is conveyed in her statements below. Thank God I don't won't set my eyes on that downgraded place again. I don't know how you could stand it. But you always could stand anything, not me. Thank God Georgia will escape the Kingston slums. Do you share the same sentiments as Letitia about your native country? Let me know in the comment section below. Letitia and the narrator had a different opinion of their native country. Letitia viewed Jamaica as a downgraded place where there is limited opportunities for upward mobility 
while Jude is proud of her native country. Her visit to the United States has really enlightened her about the true realities that exist in the United States and has somewhat shattered any misconceptions about the American dream. Jude, unlike Letitia, who appears to be living in a fict fictional bubble, is conscious of the fact that America, like all countries, has an air of ugliness. Thus, everything is not as merry in America as what is being portrayed. Get that? The Wigs. The wigs worn by Aunt Teach and her daughter Georgia are used as symbols within this story, in that they represent the fact that both characters have assimilated the American culture and have abandoned their Jamaican culture. There is also the impression that this culture that they have assimilated does not represent who they are and so they appear fake. Consequently, June cannot relate to them as there is a cultural disconnect. Did you get that? If you did, go ahead and pat yourself on the shoulders. Well done. And remember that the wigs are used as symbols. In this short story, the writer Velma Pollard uses figurative language to enhance the plot. Some of these are as follows. One, repetition. Now, repetition is seen in the following lines. Nothing is in, in my experience had prepared me for the Bronx. Nothing had prepared me for this place. People spend all anxious lifetimes waiting to get visas and letters of invitation to come up to. The repetition of the word nothing is used to emphasize the narrator's feelings of extreme shock and bewilderment. She was surprised at the sight and the ugliness that existed in America. Secondly, Pollard uses irony. I wrote home to my father and begged him not to tell anybody I had gone up. Pollard uses situational irony here as one would have expected that June would have been in awe of America, so much so that she would be bragging about her visits to her friends. However, this was not the expected outcome as the narrator June does not want anyone to know that she has been to America. There is the impression that the narrator, if asked about her impression of America, who would have been truthful and might have ruined others' imaginary perceptions of this country, America. Did you get that? If you did, go ahead again and pat yourself on the shoulders. You see, knowing the figurative devices and being able to explain and comment on their effectiveness will give you good marks in your upcoming examination because you will be required to comment on one of the devices from each story. Did you get that? Okay, good. Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing is seen in the following sentences. And I marvel at all the peace of the heat and cool and the clustered greenery of orange trees, as far as my eyes could see, could mesmerize me. And I knew that the city, my city then, or any future city, could never claim the grass bound hill bound soul of me i felt a great pity for my aunt almost as great as the pity she felt for me the above words prepares us the readers for the narrator june's rejection of american culture and lifestyle did you get that if you did go ahead and pat yourself on the shoulders and also remember that foreshadowing is used here as a narrative technique in every story, there are lessons that students can learn, right? And this story is no exception.
Alright, so there are many lessons that one can learn from this story. Some of these are as follows. One, people's perception of their native country may differ depending on their socioeconomic background and their experiences in their native country. So depending on where you live in Jamaica or depending on where um, your experiences in that country, that will determine how you view the country as as seen where um, you would have seen that June's perception of Jamaica is quite different from Aunt Teach and that may be due to their experiences. Um, secondly, our perception of a place may be different from the, rea the actual reality. So all that glitters is not gold. And so America is somewhat being glamorized by social media, right? And so everybody assumed that everywhere is looking lush and and all but that uh, that's our imaginary perception right based on what has been created by the media right but all that glitters is not global in that there are some aspects of america that may not be as enticing as we would have expected thirdly living the american dream is not the goal of everyone as some persons are content living in their native land or country fourthly Although America is presented as a place that offers more opportunities and that's a given for self-advancement, all aspect of America is not beautiful. Thus, our perception may be tainted by social glamorization of this first world country. Are we, are we, uh, do you have any other lesson that you have learned from this story? Share it in the comment section. Quotations from the story. Here we are, not even aware that we were in misery, and here she was, wasting so much pity on us. Who decide what is meat and what is poison? Quotation number two. On teach powdered bright pink, black eyebrows drawn in to make her face look anything but what God had intended. Quotation to note. That there was no Georgia for me to see, that this thing created out of the imagination of my crazy aunt was what I would have to get accustomed to in the name of my cousin, who had been simple, yes, but not mad until her mother gave her a chance to make it in the U.S. of A. The title of the story, used literally, prepares us for the feeling of disdain and abstinence taken by the narrator, June. The fact that the title connects Georgia to America, we get the impression that the American culture would have been embraced by Georgia. The writer use of the Creole lexicon them there in the title, Georgia and them there, United States, implies that the narrator would have not, would not have shared the same perception of the United States. Consequently, there is the implied snobbish disconnection with whatever America is offering, though it has been accepted or embraced by others. Do you share the same sentiments? Question. Can you answer this question? Let's see. Now the question reads, everyone is not patriotic to his or her native country. With reference to the short stories, Georgia and them there, United States, and Tubdab Do in memoriam, discuss how a major character showed his or her patriotism or lack thereof. Comment on one narrative technique used by the writer in each story to explore the theme of patriotism. Based on the issues discussed in each story, state which of the two stories you prefer and justify your preference. As you know, you are asked or you're expected to do three things, okay? First, you must show how a major character show is or her patriotism or lack thereof and i'm sure you're able to do that well and that will be worth eight marks then comment on one narrative technique used by the writer in each story and that aspect is worth nine marks and then the other aspect based on the issues discussed in each story state which of the two stories you prefer and justify your preference that is also worth nine marks hence the essay is in and of itself is marked out of 25 but then expression and 
organization is allotted 10 marks so hence the total marks is 35 can you do this as a question i know you can share a link in the comment section with a sample of your essay of course i will be also providing you a sample of this essay which you can access in the description link